computer. There, recording in progress. So now I just see how easy it is to goop everything up, right? Uh, so uh, back to what Paul said to the Philippian church. We're talking about starting fresh for the new year, okay? He said, whereby seeing we're, we're uh, compassed about with so great a cloud of witnesses, let us lay aside every weight and the sin which does so easily beset us, okay? And let us run with patience uh, the race that is set uh, before us, okay? And uh, listen, those weights, those sins, they set us back from enjoying the abundant life that, that Jesus Christ wants us to have, okay? Uh, Jesus said, I'm come that they might have life. Talking about believers, I'm come that they might have life and that they might have it uh, more abundantly. And uh, just prior to him saying that, he told us that there's an adversary. And uh, I jumped the gun a little bit. That adversary uh, uh, said that uh, he's called the devil, and he comes to steal and to kill and to destroy. And so the uh, uh, the devil, let me go backwards there. Uh, so the devil wants to remind us of our past. Uh, he wants to keep our focus on, on the past and uh, in order to keep us from enjoying that life, that abundant life that God wants us uh, to have, that he gave us to have. Okay, the devil doesn't want you to have that. God, God wants you to have a fresh start. I believe that uh, with all my heart. Uh, he said, I want you to have a new beginning. Over there in, in uh, Lamentations, okay? It is of the Lord's mercies that were not consumed because his compassions fail not. They are new every morning. Great is thy faithfulness, okay? Every morning. Uh, he has compassion. Do you realize every morning God wants you to start? It's a new day. And uh, and and today is the new day of days. Okay, for the for 2020 years, uh, 2023, and and uh, it ought to make you excited to know that God desires to give you a fresh start uh, and uh, and a new beginning in life. Okay, uh, listen. Last year, uh, no doubt, some of us said, you know, I'm gonna I'm gonna grow in my relationship with God. And uh, I want to pray more, and and uh, I want to get more involved with the church. I want to prove, uh, I want to prove God by giving more. And and uh, listen, the list could just go on and on and on. And the truth is, we uh, we may have made some bad decisions uh, from doing these things, and they held us back. And so this morning, January first, two thousand twenty three. Uh, I want to encourage you uh, to renew that commitment, okay? Renew your commitment and your love uh, for the Lord, okay? Over in Isaiah, uh, Isaiah says this, Remember ye not the former things. Don't stay focused on those things that drag you down. Neither consider the things of old, okay? Behold, I will do a new thing. Now it shall spring forth. Uh, shall ye not know it? Okay. And listen, you know, uh, there is a way that we cannot understand and see what God's trying to do in our life. If And, and that, that way is if we live in the flesh, we're just not going to see what God is trying to do. But he's saying, I will even make a way in the wilderness and rivers uh, in the in the desert. Okay. And uh, there's a God in heaven this morning. And I want to encourage you. And he uh, he wants to give you a drink in, uh, the, in a spiritually uh, darkest, the driest of times, okay? Remember not those former things, okay? Forget the past. And uh, yeah, we all made mistakes. And instead, uh, look to the new things uh, that uh, that he wants us to do. And we need to understand that, he's, that God's more interested in our future than he is in our past. That's why he forgets those things, okay? He forgets our sin as far as the east is from the west. Isn't that good? And uh, he forgets those things. And uh, he's more interested in the future. And uh, and that's where you're, hey, listen, we're all going to spend the rest of our life in the future, okay? So old things are passed away. Behold, all things have become new. And uh, we're studying the book of First Samuel on Wednesday nights. And a few weeks back, uh, uh, we saw how Israel was so backslidden uh, on God that they found themselves in a battle with the Philistines, okay? And they they could not see what God was actually doing in their life. And uh, and instead of uh, instead of uh, instead of getting right with God, they just focused on the way things were. 
uh, what they were seeing with their natural carnal eyes, and they knew that they were outmatched by the Philistines. So they took the Ark of the Covenant, thinking that God was with them. They took it out of the tabernacle and they brought it to the, they brought it into the battle, thinking that it would fight for them. Okay, and I mentioned to you, God's not, uh, God's not an it, uh, but instead God didn't fight for them, and they were defeated. And not only were they defeated, but the Philistines ended up taking that Ark of God uh, from them, and they put it in. Uh, they put it in their own temple of their own gods. Now, listen, maybe you feel that you've made uh, so many mistakes and you fail God uh, so miserably so many times that he's He's just done with you and that he's not going to forgive you and He's um, that uh, he can't forgive you and he's never going to use you because of your past. And maybe you feel, uh, maybe you believe that you've got no future with God. Listen, uh, remember uh, remember ye not the former things, okay? Uh, don't forget those things, okay? Remember remember not. Don't focus on those old things. Behold, I will do a new thing, he said, okay? God's saying, look, it's not over. Your life's not over. And, uh, you know, I can take you off the shelf and I can use you again for my honor and glory. And, and he wants to use us for his honor and glory. And uh, he's, I, he's got plans for your life. And... Uh, he says, I've got, I, I, I want to do something new for you. And this morning, I've got a little, uh, a little acrostic for you, okay? A little formula uh, for starting over, okay? And uh, that acrostic uh, basically is the word start, okay? Start, that's the acrostic. Let's see if I got it here. And, uh, okay, of course, I didn't put the word start up there, but I should have. And, uh, but... Uh, but the word start uh, starts with the letter S, okay? And uh, the idea is, uh, uh, look, just stop making excuses, okay? If I want a fresh start, I've got to stop making excuses for my failures, okay? I've got to stop blaming other people. I've got to stop seeing myself as a victim of my circumstances. Uh, other people can't hurt us. There's only so much they can do. They can hurt our bodies. Maybe they can hurt our feelings, but... Uh, but uh, and, and other people can scar us. I understand that. And particularly when we're younger, <clears throat> those hurts and those pains can stay with us. But as we get older, we don't have to let we don't have to allow those things to continue hurting us and scarring us. And so we have to stop making excuses for the things that took place in the past in the past. And I understand that might sound a little harsh. You don't understand, Pastor, what I've been through. And it's like. You know, uh, God does understand what you've been through. And he's the one that said the things that he said. Old things are passed away. Behold, all things have become new. Uh, you can't use the past. Stop making the uh, using the excuses of the past to keep you uh, from uh, from going on uh, to, a, uh, to a better life. The only person that can ultimately ruin your life now is you. Okay. That's the only person is, okay? And I'm not talking about, uh, you know, I'm not talking about life-changing tragic events, you know, an accident or, you know, uh, health issues. I'm not talking about those. Uh, oh, here we go. We got somebody else that wants to come in. I'm not doing enough. There we go. All right. And uh, so uh, the idea is other people can hurt us. And, uh, you know, I'm, so I'm talking about the hurts and the pains and the emotional scars that people cause in your life. And uh, let's see, uh, I've got to find uh, Sharon. Appreciate you coming in. Happy New Year to you. Happy New Year. Uh, hey, can you do us uh, do us all a favor? Because I'm, I'm sort of in the middle of the message at this point, okay? So if you could turn your microphone off, that would be great. Okay? And... Uh, because everybody has their microphone off. All right, so there you go. Sorry. And uh, it's good to see you, okay? Hallelujah for that. Uh, but uh, uh, I'm talking about the hurts and pains that uh, that other people cause in your life. And and uh, maybe, uh, maybe there's self-inflicted scars that you've caused yourself. But the truth is nobody can ruin your life other than you, okay? No one can ruin your life without your permission. You got to let them do that. And uh, so you've got a choice. And that and that is that you can choose 
of how you're going to respond to those hurts and those pains, okay? And the Bible says that we're start that uh, the, the starting point is to just be honest and to accept the responsibility for your part of the problem, okay? Listen, I, I realize little children uh, get caught up in, in things that, that they had no control over. But once they're older, once they once they understand where uh, how God feels about them, that God loves them, and God wants to heal the brokenhearted and, and uh, set those captives free, then they have to allow themselves to be set free, okay? I talked about that. Uh, a couple weeks back about how we can have our chains fall off and uh, and the shackles fall off, but and the prison door flung open, but yet we stay inside prison, those prison walls instead of getting up and walking out. So that's that part is up to you now. Uh, the Bible says uh, that you have to be honest and and accept responsibility for your for your part uh, of the problem. And uh, so maybe you're saying, well, I didn't cause the problem, and uh, but you still have to deal with the problem. And that now, and now the fact that you have to deal with the problem becomes your problem. And uh, now you have to pick it up from there, okay? And uh, and if you're not willing to deal with the property properly, uh, then uh, then you're going to be held responsible for that. Uh, uh, Proverbs 28 says, "He that covereth his sins shall not prosper." If you're not willing to uh, uh, to look and see that not dealing, even with the hurts and pains that you've uh, that you've experienced in this life, uh, and maybe the bad decisions that you've made as a result of that, listen, I have made so many bad decisions because of the hurts and pains. I mean, that's why people turn to alcohol. That's why people turn to drugs and they turn to, uh, to uh, you know, a lascivious lifestyle. They're trying to escape those things. But at some point, when I become a child of God, I realize I have to realize old things are passed away. I can't use those excuses, uh, the, the excuses of the hurts and pains to cause these other problems in my life. I've got to start a new life now. And that's what I'm trying to get across, okay? So he that covereth his sins shall not prosper, but whoso confesseth and forsaketh them shall have mercy, okay? We're talking about uh, a new year and a new life, wiping the slate clean, and see the things that are going on in your life uh, that are just not healthy, confessing those uh, things to God, okay? And, uh, you know, the Bible... Uh, 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 the Bible, uh, Bible says that he that covereth his sin shall not prosper. Okay, and uh, so uh, he says the the starting point uh, to starting over is to be uh, faithful and and to just face those things. Okay, and uh, if you haven't been dealing with them biblically, confess them, forsake them, and uh, sometimes we try that and uh, we don't see the results that we want. Uh, as fast as we, you know, as fast as we want to see him, and we'll say, "Well, listen, you know, I, I confessed, I confessed my sins, I confessed my faults two weeks ago, and I still don't see the results." So, you know, so then what happens? Maybe then maybe you give up too soon. Well, okay, well, then then that's a fault. That's a sin. You gave up too soon. And uh, Proverbs twenty four verse ten says, uh, "If thou faint in the day of adversity, thy strength is small." Oh Lord, that's me. My strength is is small. Okay, well then confess that. It's like okay, I've got to build up. I've got to build up my strength. And and uh, 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 the problem is that uh, many times when uh, during trying times, okay, we stop trying. And that we give up too soon, and it's a major problem uh, with some folks in a church, in our church. They just give up way too easy. It's just too hard. Let me tell you something. You're never a failure until you give up. And sometimes we just plain give up too soon, okay? And uh, it's always, let, let me say this, it's always too soon to quit, okay? It's always too soon to quit. And uh, whether we need someone uh, down at the church to make sure the pipes aren't burst, whether we need to get victory in some other particular sin in your life, I mean, if, if we need to get something done, we need to get it done. And uh, and we, we can't just be given up uh, so easy. Bible says we need to stop making excuses and admit it 
uh, uh, that it's, you know, it's our fault uh, so that we can get on with our life. OK, and people are very good at making excuses and uh, and uh, they're rarely good for anything other than just that. OK, so so listen, uh, you, st- you you spend all that energy thinking up reasons why uh, why you, why you can't be doing what you're doing or think up reasons on why you're not as strong spiritually as you ought to be. But the bottom line is uh, you got you and God is a majority. He can he can strengthen you. OK, so the S uh, in our acrostic of start stands for stop making excuses. OK, and uh, then uh, the next is the T. You got to take an inventory, take an inventory of my life. What uh, and that's exactly what a lot of businesses are doing at the end of the year. Uh, you see them out there in the in the aisles. They're taking inventory, and uh, uh, and so they can they know how to plan. They know what to order uh, for the upcoming year. And the truth is, I need to do that in my own life, in my own personal life. Where did I fall short last year? Where did I come up short? Where did I fail? How do I how do I feel about my failure last year? How do I feel about that? Am I going to do anything about that this year? How does God feel about it? Is it hindering my prayer life? If I'm if I'm not confessing these things to God, are my prayers even getting through? And then it's like, well, you know what? There's no uh, there's no point because I don't feel like my prayers are getting through anyway. So uh, I'm just you know I'm going to do you see how that all works? Uh, It just works negative, okay? Uh, Maybe that's why some folks don't want to pray. And uh, they know that God isn't listening because of unconfessed sin in their life. And so the bottom line is I need to take inventory, and I I need to learn from it. Galatians uh, chapter 3, verse 4 says, Have you suffered so many things in vain? If it yet be in vain? Okay, what what does that mean, preacher? Preacher. Uh, That means that you've gone through these experiences, you've gone through these issues over and over and over in your life, and have you gone over them so many times, and you still, you're, you're, they're you're, they're not, you're you're not growing, you're not, you're not going further. Is it, is it, has it been done in vain? Okay, Uh, these thoughts, the emotions, the, the experiences, are you learning anything from it, or are you just not learning? And I tell folks, if you find yourself weak in an area, then you have opportunities to strengthen them. The one thing that comes to mind that is so visual to me is people that say that they they have a tough time praying in public. And so they'll show up for prayer meeting on Wednesday night, and then when it's time for prayer, they get up and they walk out. (laughs) And it's like, This is the time to hit the weight room. (laughs) And that's not time. You don't walk into the you don't walk into the gym and say, oh man, I'm too weak to do all that. And then turn around and walk out. Uh, You go in there and you start lifting weights the best way you know how. And and uh, you start out easy, you start out small, but uh, you can't use that as an excuse. Well, I I don't feel comfortable praying, so I'm not going to pray. And when God says men, men ought always to pray, and he gives us Numerous examples of, of, of corporate prayer uh, going on uh, in uh, in the, the New Testament, okay? So take an inventory. Learn from your mistakes. Uh, failure can be your friend or, their, or else failure can be your foe, okay? And you're the one that determines whether or not uh, you're going to be a, a, a failure, whether failure is going to be your friend uh, or, whether, uh, or whether it's going to be your foe. It all depends on how many... Uh, on how you react to it. I wonder how many folks have set out to read their Bible uh, through in a year, and then they didn't make it. And uh, listen, I'm not I'm not going to condemn anybody for that. You know what I'm going to do? I'm going to encourage you. Hey, listen, just continue reading. Continue reading. Start over if you have to, or if you want to pick up where you left off and get it done in two years, get it done in two years, so that at least you can say that you that you've read through the uh, you've read through the Bible uh, in its entirety, and then go back and start it again. Okay, I'm not condemning anybody. The question is, are you going to condemn yourself and then just give up? Uh, or are you going to learn from it and try something different this year so that you don't make the same mistake again? Uh, listen, I have I have trouble uh, getting through my Bible uh, in a year. I'll be honest with you. So what I did was I downloaded a uh, 
uh, uh, an audio app. I, I particularly like Alexander Scorby. I realize some people don't like him. Uh, they don't like his voice. I like his voice. It's, so, it's kind of it's almost majestic sounding a little bit to me. And uh, I like that. And so I'll read my Bible and I'll listen to him. And uh, this past year, uh, I started, uh, I finished up my Bible uh, for the second time in two, uh, in 2022, I was, well, in 2021, I was reading my Bible through twice in a year, but I didn't get through it the second time until uh, toward the end of January of 2022. And then I started uh, from uh, in Genesis 1, 1 at the end of January, this past January, and I finished the Bible by mid-July, Okay. You get an audio app, sit there and read your Bible and listen to somebody and just turn everything else off, turn your phone off, turn everything off and just spend time with God and read the Bible. Faith cometh by hearing and hearing uh, by the word of God. So it's okay to hear the Bible while you're reading it. I encourage it. Uh, so I finished my Bible by the middle of July, and then I started the chronological Bible then. I started reading it chronologically, okay, uh, after I already read it through from cover to cover. And uh, right now, uh, I'm starting, uh, I'm in Judges and in First Samuel, okay? Guess what I'm going to do? I'm going to stop uh, reading my Bible chronologically today. And I'm going to start reading it through from cover to cover, uh, and I'll have the audio app on, and I'll have my Bible read by the end of June, and then I'll pick up the chronological Bible again. It'll be refreshing to me, okay? And I'm not saying you have to do it that way. I'm just giving you an example that uh, people uh, people fail, and they don't learn from their failures, and they just give up too easy, okay? And uh, don't give up. Uh, learn from it, and... Uh, and uh, choose to learn from it or choose to repeat it, okay? Uh, if you can learn from it, then it'll be your friend. But if you don't, it'll be your foe. And uh, there's there's four different kinds of experiences, okay, that God uses to shape our lives, all right? He uses our personal experiences to shape our lives. Uh, the family that you grew up in, the family that you have, the people you relate to, uh, you know, husbands, wives, okay, uh, uh, other family members, friends, church folks, uh, you know, co-workers. He uses those personal experiences to uh, to shape you, okay? Also, uh, I mentioned the workplace, you know, vocational and educational experiences, okay? You know, we had, uh, we had some friends over that we hadn't seen in a while. We had them over the other night, and in the uh and the and the question the 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 one the the one fellow asked the question he goes so uh, what was your first job and i and i started giving him i i started telling him my my work history my first job was this and then i then i did that and then i did this and then i did that and, and i got fired from this job and then i did that and and uh so on down the line and and then i asked him and and he gave uh he gave his his story of all his his uh, job experiences. And and it was at about that point that, that Lois said, you know, it explains why you guys are able to do some of the things that you're able to do. It's it's because of your, your work experience. And, and uh, so uh, God uses those vocational, those educational work experiences to shape you. He also uses your spiritual uh, experiences to shape you, okay? Like coming to church, <laughs> okay? Like reading your Bible, like going to the ladies' meeting, like prayer time, uh, taking time to go, taking time in your schedule to go out deliberately and uh, and invite folks out to church, okay? Uh, 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 having a, a quiet time. Uh, he uses he uses those experiences to shape you. He also uses the painful experiences in in your life to shape you. You know, a lot of times people need the experiences maybe that you've experienced, so it'll help them. Uh, I think I'm I, I just, just coming to mind now, and uh, I can't remember the chapter and verse, but, you know, uh, that we're to comfort those that need comfort with the comfort that we've been comforted with, okay? So in other words, if I've endured some hardships in my life and, and God has shown me how to get victory over those things, I can use those victories, even though they may have been horrendous, 
to help someone else get victory over their life, okay? And uh, the thing that comes to my mind is when some, uh, you know, when a child has been sexually abused and, you know, as they grow up, uh, you know, people struggle, uh, women struggle with that thing so often, but yet some women are able to get victory over those things. And then when they see another woman struggling, they're able to help that woman. And uh, so uh, use those spiritual experiences uh, to shape you and don't just go over and repeating the same mistakes over and over again. Uh, so he uses those those painful experiences to shape you, you know. I've seen people in their 40s and 50s and 60s and 70s and older, okay, that uh, that don't seem like they got 40, 50, 60, 70, and 80 years of experience. Do you know what I'm saying? They just don't seem like they've ever grown that much. There's There's some people that I see that, honestly, I look at their life, and their life reminds me of a cartoon. Uh, they're, they're just so far from uh, being mature. And so they have the same experiences year after year, over and over. And it doesn't appear that they've learned anything from those things. And, and uh, so I'm asking, you know, what have you learned from your past experiences? What have you learned uh, from this past year? And if you don't sit down and think it through, okay, uh, the T that we're talking about is taking inventory. If you don't sit down and think it, think it through, you're probably going to just end up repeating the same mistake over and over again because you didn't take time. And uh, by the way, you have a pastor that cares for you and loves you, okay, willing to help you sort things out. And it's like, well, I don't, I don't want to ask him. He always tells me things that, you know, that I don't want to hear. And you know, and it reminds me of uh, Jehoshaphat when he was uh, yoking up with the king of Israel, okay? It was the divided kingdom. Uh, the, the Judah uh, was uh, divided from Israel, and jo Jehoshaphat was the king of Judah. Uh, and, uh, and so he wants to make allies now with the king of Israel and so that they can go out and, and uh, fight the Assyrians, I think it was. And... Uh, and so, uh, uh, so Jehoshaphat says to the king of Israel, he, go, he said, inquire of the Lord and uh, inquire of the Lord uh, whether we ought to go to battle or not, okay? And so the king, king of Israel got 400 of his prophets together, uh, and he asked them if they should go to battle. And they said, oh, yeah, go to battle. Everything's going to work out. You're going to be victorious. You're going to come back victorious. And, uh, and uh, Je Jehoshaphat said, he said, is there, is there not a prophet here of the Lord beside that we might inquire of him? <laughs> and then the king of Israel said unto Jehoshaphat, and this is what reminds me of people that don't want to go to the preacher. The king of Israel said unto Jehoshaphat, there is yet one man, <laughs> uh, Micaiah, the son of Imlah, by whom we may inquire of the Lord. But I hate him, for he doth not prophesy good concerning me, but evil. And Jehoshaphat said, let not the king say so. And uh, the idea, it's like, uh, uh, you know, you ought, not, you ought not think like that. And uh, sometimes people don't want to hear from the pastor because they know what the pastor is going to say, and they don't want to hear what he's got to say. So they don't bother asking him in the first place. So the idea is take an inventory of your spiritual walk. Uh, from this past year, okay? And then the next letter is A, and our acrostic, okay? And, and A stands for act in faith, act in faith, okay? It's this, the third step in, uh, in getting a fresh start. The S was stop making excuses. Then, uh, then T is take an inventory of your spiritual walk. And now A is act in faith. Okay, the Bible says uh, that the key to changing anything uh, is faith. Okay, without faith, it's impossible to please God. And if you want to change your circumstances, it's going to have to take faith. If you want to change your personality, it's going to have to take faith. You, can you, you mean, preacher, I can change my very personality? Yeah, you can, but you're going to have to work at it. It's going to take faith. And uh, if you want the victory over the sin in your life, uh, you're going to have to exercise faith, okay? And the faith, by the way, the faith I'm talking about, it's not some dead hope, not some dead, uh, you know, hope so, uh, I sure hope so kind of a faith, okay? 
uh, it's an affirmative. Okay, it takes affirmative. I'm not a person. I don't want to get into the whole affirmative action thing, but will it will it take it will take affirmative action on your part? All right, and uh, uh, affirmative uh, faith takes positive action. Okay, and it's coupled uh, with the help of God to change your life. And that primary example that I'm constantly using is uh, Joshua and Caleb uh, versus the, the 10 other spies of Israel. And Joshua and Caleb, they went in, they spied out the land along with the other 10 spies, the, the promised land. And they they came back and they reported back to Moses and and uh, they believed uh, uh, they believed God, they trusted God, they had faith in God, um, uh, but they also believed that they were required uh, to fight, uh, and if they didn't fight, then nothing would happen. They understood that, but they believed God for that whole thing. And uh, and so, uh, but the other 10 guys, the other 10 spies, they didn't believe it. And uh, so in order to see God move and to get the victory, they had to be willing to fight uh, for as long as it took. And uh, and I and I use this illustration over and over and over again about those 10 spies. Those 10 spies, unfortunately, dis they discouraged the children of Israel, and they caused the children of Israel to wander around for an entire lifetime with no victory. And I've seen that happen to Christians. And that's what I'm trying to, uh, I I'm trying to avoid that for everyone that comes in contact with me. Uh, uh, you know, uh, anyone that comes into our, con uh, our congregation, I want them to avoid uh, just wandering around aimlessly for a lifetime and getting no victory. So in order to start acting in faith, uh, it means you're going to have to stop uh, having the pity party a little bit, okay? you got to stop feeling sorry for yourself. Oh, poor me, I'm just a victim, okay? And, uh, you know, life is just so unfair. You know, you know. again, we're back to the excuses thing, okay? And uh, life's not fair, okay? We live in a sin-cursed world. And um, and it's filled with sin because because that's just the way it is, okay. But you got to go on with life. So uh, the more time uh, we spend regretting our past, uh, the more of our future is wasted, okay. It's important that we understand that. And you're setting yourself up if you're gonna if you're gonna focus on the past, you're just setting yourself up for the same thing in the future, okay. And the way you get yourself. Uh, set yourself up for more failure is focusing on your past failures. Uh, uh, act in faith, okay? Uh, Proverbs 27, as in water, face answereth to face, so the heart of man to man. What does that mean, preacher? You've heard me say this. I've used it uh, particularly in the spiritual warfare uh, material uh, often that uh, as face answer it to face in water, okay? We see our reflection and what we look at. When we look at just the reflection we're looking at, uh, the more we focus on just what we're looking at, that's what we become. And so the heart of man to, to man. If I'm just focusing on the things in my heart, the focusing on the things in my past, then that's that's what I am. That's what I'm going to, that's what's going to stay in my heart. I have to get out of that. I have to get out of that uh uh, I have to get out of that mode, okay? And uh, do you know, uh, and I'm asking you this, do you understand the real secret of success, okay? You can't focus, uh, you can't focus on your past. You can't focus on those things. And uh, do you understand the secret uh, of success, okay? Do you realize that virtually every successful entrepreneur failed miserably before they succeeded? Uh, all they did was they figured out what didn't work, and they just went on and they did something different. Uh, Thomas Edison said, you know, uh, uh, you know, he failed. I don't know whether it was 200. depends on what what you read. It's either he either failed 200 times or 2,000 times at making a light bulb. And he said, no, I didn't fail. Uh, I didn't, you know, before I made a light bulb, uh, I didn't fail 2,000 times. I just learned 1,999 ways not to make a light bulb. And uh, so we ultimately learned how to make a light bulb. Uh, do you realize, and I'm, you know, don't ask me about Walt Disney, but he's still an example. Do you realize that he got fired 
uh, from a newspaper in Kansas City because he la- they said that he lacked imagination. Walt Disney lacked imagination. Can you believe that? Henry Ford went bankrupt twice uh, before he was able to start the Ford Motor Company that we're familiar with and start uh, using time management and and uh, and creating that assembly line. He went bankrupt twice. Okay, and uh, did he stay down? No. He uses he used those experiences, and he stepped out and he learned from them. Uh, Abraham Lincoln was fired. Uh, from a number of jobs when he was younger, before he became the president of the United States. By the way, he suffered from depression the entire way, okay? But he he chose to overcome, first of all, he became the president of the United States, but he also chose to overcome uh, the chronic uh, uh, depression in his life uh, and just forcing himself to be happy, okay? Happiness is a choice. And he goes, I I choose not to be depressed. And he just fought it and fought it and fought it and, and ultimately got the victory. And uh, so I'm saying you learn from your past uh, failures and, 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 uh, and mistakes. So don't call it a failure in your life. Call it an, ed- call it an education and then act in faith uh, uh, for the future, okay? And uh, some people will never act. Uh, because they've been paralyzed by the fear of those past experiences, okay? And uh, we can get over those things, okay? How do you get rid of those failures? Faith. Step out by faith. Faith. It's not so much the absence of fear. It's moving, okay, ahead in spite of your fears. And sometimes the way uh, the, the the way you're going to get victory is uh, uh, is uh, is facing that fear. And, and getting involved in that fear. Right? Two, two different illustrations. Number one is the people that are that don't feel comfortable praying in public. Well, start praying in public or start at least subjecting yourself. Stick around and open your ears to listen to other people praying. And, uh, and before you know it, you may find yourself praying in public. I tell folks it took me two years uh, of being uh, afraid. When I, when I got saved... Uh, I would go to I would go to Wednesday night prayer, and I would sit there and keep my mouth shut when when the guys started praying. I mean, I would just let them go around me. Two years until finally I opened up and I don't know what I said. It was probably ten words or something. Who knows? But the idea is, I just sat there. I've given you the example of the scuba gear, okay? And the the first time I I, I tried on uh, I tried on a scuba tank and the mask and the and the and the 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 mouthpiece there and i was under i was underwater sitting on the bottom of the pool and i wasn't breathing because i was afraid to breathe <laughs> and i could hear the muffled voice of the instru- the instructor saying brood brood <laughs> and finally i had to overcome all that fear and inhale while I was underwater, and it was okay. I inhaled air, not water. And I'm saying that's that was an act of faith. I had to trust the equipment. And uh, listen, trust your equipment. You got the Bible. You've got a church. You've got a pastor. You've got prayer. You've got people in your life that love you, that are believers, that want to watch you uh, and see you get victory in your life. Okay, so. Uh, so act in faith. And then uh, the next letter is R, okay? Uh, and that the idea is to refocus, and I need to refocus my thoughts uh, if I want victory in my life. And uh, uh, if I want old things to pass away and I want uh, all things to become new, then I have to rethink the way I think, okay? Rethink the way I think. I need to change my mind about a number of issues. Uh let me get let me get to the R there. Refocus, okay? Galatians five one. I have this on my business card, by the way. If you ever got one of my business cards, Galatians five one. Stand fast, therefore, in the liberty wherewith Christ hath made us free, and be not entangled again with the yoke of bondage. And uh, the idea of stand fast—that's a military term, and uh, uh, it's like uh, you know, maintain your position, hold the line, and. Uh, uh, that's your position right now. This is your position. Uh, this is your territory. And the, and the devil is going to easily convince you that you're not capable of standing fast. He can easily, I mean, he's he's seen you coming for 6,000 years. 
And uh, he's going to talk you right out of uh, standing fast, holding your line, maintaining your position. Uh, but you have a new position in Christ, okay? And so don't allow the enemy to take that position. Stand fast, therefore, in the liberty wherewith Christ hath made us free, okay? And be not entangled again in the yoke of bondage. Stand up and walk out of that jail, that, that jail cell. The, the, the chains are off, the shackles are off, and the door is open. Get out of there. Uh, Proverbs uh, uh, says, keep thy heart with all diligence. Okay, that's going to take a lot of effort. All diligence, for out of it are the issues of life. And uh, the way you think determines how you're going to feel. And... Uh, and the way you feel determines how you're going to act. And if you want to change your actions, then you're going to have to change the way you think, and it'll eventually change the way you act, okay? Listen, if you're depressed, if you're discouraged, uh, if you're in distress, uh, it may be because you're thinking about depression. It may be because you're discouraged and, and, you're, and you're thinking distressing thoughts, okay? But listen, Abraham Lincoln came to the conclusion, that's my choice whether or not I'm going to stay there. And uh, so he chose not to stay there. And uh, if you're acting fearful, excuse me, uh, if you're always worried, uh, it's because you're thinking fearful, worried thoughts. You need to change. You need to change. You need to refocus the way you think. And uh, and it will change your actions. OK, uh, we were talking about acting in faith. OK, you got to act. And I tell people in our church when they tell me they're depressed. Get up, get into a routine, get out of the house, walk around the block, go to the store, show up for church, show up for prayer meeting, and uh, anything. Get out, change your actions, refocus. And uh, and I'm telling folks that uh, it seems like I'm a broken record sometimes when I'm telling folks that. And uh, so uh, we need to uh, purposely allow our mind to be cleansed from that junk, okay? Romans chapter 2, uh, where am I? Uh-oh, did I forget one? Oh, no, okay. Romans chapter 2, be transformed by the renewing of your mind, okay? And uh, and uh, if I have to refocus my thoughts, uh, uh, I'm going to have to do that. If I want victory in the new year, that means I'm going to have to stop thinking some of my old thinking patterns, okay? Uh, let me ask you, what memories uh, do, you, do, you, do you keep rehearsing that keep you from having that fresh start uh, and that spiritual growth. The Bible says, well, "Let those things go," and uh, and the more you hold on to those uh, those old memories, the more you uh, the more you rehearse them in your mind, uh, the more you're just going to continue to live them. Okay, and uh, that's not it's not a good thing. I know. Listen, I'm almost done. I don't know what time it is, but we're not having church tonight. Okay, so. Uh, so just stick with me a little bit more, okay? Uh, we're talking about refocusing, okay? Those things in your past cannot hurt you again without your permission. Uh, Ephesians uh, chapter uh, 4, again, uh, you hear me say it all the time, neither give place to the devil. And then I quote to you 2 Corinthians chapter 2, lest Satan should get an advantage of us, for we're not ignorant of his devices. And I just, in my mind, I link those two verses together. Neither give place to the devil, lest Satan should get an advantage of us. Neither give place to the devil, lest Satan should get an advantage of us. And uh, and he will. He wants he wants to take advantage of you, okay? We're talking about holding the line. We're talking about standing fast. And uh, if you don't stand fast, he will uh, take advantage of you, okay? So it's like, okay, well, but then, then how do I, you know, how do I overcome some of that stuff? Well, you might just have to realize that by by reliving those things in your mind, maybe it's just plain sinful for you to relive those things. If God wants you to be renewed, at some point, uh, at some point it becomes sin for not going forward, okay? And at that point, uh, the Bible says if we confess our sins, he's faithful and trust to forgive us our sins and to cleanse us from all unrighteousness, okay? You say, well, I've confessed it to God, but I still feel guilty. How do I get rid of the painful memories, okay? Well, uh, and I've given you the answer for that as well. Focus on who you are in Christ, okay? 
focus on who you are. Ephesians chapter 1 and Ephesians chapter 2. And, and I probably should have put it up here, but I didn't. But you have to read. Uh, you have to read those two chapters, okay? And I'll summarize them. Uh, I'll summarize them for you now. Focus on who you are in Christ, okay? Jesus Christ has authority, <clears throat> excuse me, above all principalities and powers and over every name that is named in this world and the world to come, okay? Ephesians chapter 2 says we're seated uh, in Christ in heavenly, uh, in heavenly places. So focus on who you are in Christ uh, instead of who you think you are in the flesh. And refocus, and refocus. Uh, replace those uh, those bad memories every time they come up and start uh, focusing on who you actually are uh, in Christ, okay? And uh, let me ask you, what's the best thing to focus on when you're having a hard time focusing? Focus on the Word of God, right? Psalm 1, blessed is the man that walketh not in the counsel of the ungodly, nor standeth in the way of sinners nor sitteth in the seat of the scornful, but his delight is in the law of the Lord, and in his law doth he meditate day and night. And what is the, what, what is the, uh, <clears throat> what are the positive uh, repercussions, if I could say that? What are, what are the positive things that take place when that person meditates on the word of God? The Bible says, you shall be like a tree planted by the rivers of water that bringeth forth his fruit in his season, his leaf also shall not wither, and whatsoever he doeth shall prosper. The more you meditate on God's word, the more successful you're going to be in your Christian walk, okay? It's a promise from God. And uh, we we'll, uh, eventually we stop seeing ourselves as other people see us, and we start seeing ourselves as God sees us, and that's where the change takes place, okay? That's where uh, that's where the power uh, that's where we get the power to start over. Okay, and then the last letter in the in our word start uh, is the letter T, okay? And uh, that's for uh, the tree, uh, the T stands for trust, okay? Trust God to do what he promised that he would do, okay? Listen, I can't change who I am. Uh, only God, only God can change me. And uh, And the problem is, is if I give up too soon in that fight, and I allow the devil to convince uh, to convince me that I can't have victory. I won't have victory. I've got to trust God. I've got to stay. I've got to stay in that fight. I've got to stand fast in that fight. Be faithful. Trust the Lord. He's going to fight for you. The uh, Bible says, "Of God before us, who can be against us?" Uh, over in Zechariah, uh, the Bible says, "Not by might nor by power, but by my Spirit," saith the Lord of hosts. And again, I'm focusing on those children of Israel standing there at Kadesh Barnea that refused to go in and fight and watch God fight for them. It wasn't their own efforts that would have given them the battle. Uh, God just wanted to see them interact with him and uh, and let them see him fight for them. And it'll increase your faith when you get in a fight. And uh, I don't know, eventually I'm going to say it and it's going to click with some folks. I don't, you know, uh, it'll eventually click if I just keep saying it over and over again. You trust God, but you get in the fight. You trust God with your sword in your hand, and you get in there, and you take actions, and you do what you got to do until you finally get the victory. Just don't give up, okay? And uh, when somebody becomes a Christian, uh, they become a brand new person, okay, inside. And uh, I'm not the same person I, I used to be. Uh, I've got a new life now. You've got a new life. And God specializes in new beginnings, okay? And Jesus Christ has the power to do that. It's called being born again. It's a chance to start over. And uh, because we've all been born wrong, then we can have a fresh start with a new life as we begin the new year, okay? Listen, do you want a fresh start in the new year? Start by asking yourself, uh, this question, where do I know where I'm going to spend eternity? Do you know Do you know where you're going to spend eternity? Jesus said you must be born again. And uh, he said, uh, for God so loved the world, uh, uh, God, that he uh, gave his only begotten son, that whosoever believed on him should not perish, 
but have everlasting life. Okay, God wants, God doesn't want anybody to perish. God doesn't want anybody to spend eternity without him. God doesn't want anybody to spend eternity in hell. And uh, But our sin separates us from God. All of sin and come short of the glory of God, the Bible says. But God commendeth his love toward us. In Romans chapter 5, God commended his love toward us. And that while we are yet sinners, Christ died for us. You don't have to die without hope. You don't have to die without God. If thou shalt confess with your mouth, Romans chapter 10, uh, if thou shalt confess with thy mouth the Lord Jesus and believe in thine heart that God hath raised him from the dead, thou shalt be saved, okay? For with the heart man believeth unto righteousness, and with the mouth confession is made unto salvation. If you believe that, call out to God and ask him to save you. He'll save you. He wants to save you. And then rely on what he did for you when he died on the cross, okay? Instead of relying on your ability to to have your good overcome your evil it won't you'll come up short bible says so uh the sacraments aren't going to save you <clears throat> ephesians chapter 2 says for by grace are you saved through faith and not of uh and not of yourselves it's a gift of god not of works lest any man should boast once you've become a child of god then you can begin to enjoy that new life. And you can enjoy, you can start enjoying it today. Uh, uh, stop making excuses. And uh, need to trust, uh, you know, uh, take an inventory of your life. Act in faith. Refocus your thoughts. Trust uh, and trust in God, okay? That's, uh, that's our acrostic. Uh, trust in God, okay? I hope, the, I hope this message has been a blessing to you. And uh, let's let's have a word of prayer. Father, I'm grateful for the word of God. And Lord, I'm asking that you just bless our congregation, bless the folks that are here uh, hearing uh, this message, Lord. I'm asking, dear God, that uh, uh, that you would uh, give them the strength uh, to overcome uh, adversities in their life, sin in their life, hardships in their life, dear God, and uh, I'll, I'll help them to apply this message uh, to their life so they can get those victories. Lord, we're asking these things in Jesus' name. Amen. Okay, I'm going to stop screen sharing. Hallelujah. And I'm going to stop the recording if I can find it. Uh, Excellent message. Stop the video. Thank you. And uh, I think I stopped recording. I'm not even sure. I guess I did. And uh, anyway, you can all unmute yourselves and say hello to everybody and, you know, fellowship as long as you like, okay? And uh, somehow, somehow my, uh, how come my camera went off? Hello. Will this be on YouTube? Uh, this will end up being on YouTube, yes. Great. Thank and, you, Pastor. It was great. Okay, well, I'm glad that you had... Uh, an appreciation for it. I also have the, uh, uh, I also have the, um, uh, the notes. If you want the notes. Yes, have, I uh, love it. Well, if I unmuted this, this is.